Katie Barson made what she refers to as the hardest decision of my life when she was informed late last year that her breast cancer had returned, had spread throughout her body, was incurable, and she might not have much time to live. The 36-year-old single mother informed her medical staff that she was done with treatment. Katie, from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire, battled through surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy after receiving a diagnosis of an aggressive, difficult-to-treat type of the disease in March 2020. These treatments caused an incredibly unusual immune system reaction, but it did work, and in December 2021, Katie, an assistant practitioner at a general practitioner surgery, was informed that she was cancer-free despite the anguish of florid skin rashes, muscle weakness, and swelling all over her body. It's been an emotional roller coaster, she wrote at the time on her Instagram account, where she revealed personal details of her experience. I've experienced a range of emotions, including relief, ecstasy, fear, wrath, anxiety, worry, and guilt for having succeeded where so many others have failed. But for the time being, it feels like the biggest weight in the world has been lifted. But the relief would not last. Tests conducted after she started having pain in her shoulder and chest in September of last year showed that her cancer had returned with a fury. Unfortunately, there was little chance of recovery. She thus took a bold decision in November 2022 to do life without the side effects of chemo that crippled me last time. Rather, she would dedicate her time to creating memories with her 13-year-old daughter, Freya, and utilize her remaining time to pursue her lifelong passions. Since then, the year has been filled with cherished memories, such as going on a billion adventures with Freya, going ice skating for Christmas at Disneyland Paris, and realizing a lifelong dream of skydiving. I was beaming the entire descent from taking off to landing. It was truly amazing, Katie remarked. A few weeks after suffering a collapsed lung, a symptom of her quickly developing disease, she also finished an arduous charity mud run. I did it because I didn't want to disappoint my sponsors, she remarked. Never have I been more pleased with myself. True, I walked, but like I always do in life, I tried to overcome every challenge. It was one of the funniest days I'd had in a long time, and Freya and seven of my friends and family joined me. As she approaches death, Katie told the mail on Sunday last week, prior to entering hospice care. When I was on chemo, I was so unwell, and I wasn't myself at all. I would get comments from Freya like, You don't look or smell like my mummy. I didn't want my daughter to have a bad impression of me as someone she couldn't identify. After receiving a diagnosis, you may feel under pressure to follow instructions. However, I knew that this was the right choice, and you will know what is best for your family. I knew that receiving treatment would not provide me with the quality of life necessary to engage in activities with my daughter, and I wanted to live while I was well. A new YouTube video from the non-profit Breast Cancer now features several moving stories, Katie's being just one of them. The project, Stories of Secondary, aims to raise awareness about secondary breast cancer, which is an incurable form of the disease. In the UK, there are an estimated 61,000 patients with secondary breast cancer, and 11,500 of them pass away annually. 5% of women have cancer that has progressed beyond the stage of diagnosis. The disease's march can be slowed down by treatment, but it cannot be completely stopped. Katie is passionate about drawing attention to secondary breast cancer. She stated, often breast cancer is referred to as a nice cancer. This is in reference to the generally positive picture for treatment, which means that for all forms of breast cancer, 85% of women now survive the disease for five years or more. However, malignancies are never nice, are they? 15% of cases of breast cancer are triple negative, like Katie's. 
Normal hormonal cancer treatments are useless for these types of malignancies, and in her instance, the newer immunotherapy medications also proved to be ineffective. Not only could she cross things off her bucket list, but she also had the strength to make future plans. Katie clarified, I've written cards for significant occasions or events in Freya's life. I'm writing my words down for her because I can't give her me, the speaker said. Her 16th, 18th and 21st birthdays for passing her driving test, for passing exams, going to uni, first home, first baby, engagement, wedding day. Organizing my own funeral was difficult, but it was also healing. It indicated that I was relieving my family of some of the burden. Knowing that Freya's mother's funeral will be the first one she attends, I have no idea how difficult that will be. There was no way she could handle a religious service followed by a burial, so I asked for a cremation. After a hard day, it is too much. Then, with my ashes, I thought, I don't want to be sitting on a mantelpiece for the next thirty years, the woman continued, so that they can go off and Freya knows I'm in the sky. Wherever she is in the world, I've decided to place them in a firework display. I don't want her to feel that she must take care of a gravestone or that she is confined to one location because that is where I am. I am wherever she wants me to be so she can travel the world. I want her to watch fireworks and think about her mother because they are everywhere. If your eyes are fixed on the sky, you cannot cry. It's really lovely. Jacqueline Tolfrey, 57, a Gloucestershire mother of four, is also in the movie. She recalled screaming while sitting in her car with her hands on the steering wheel after learning that her breast cancer had returned and was terminal. I was so overcome with resentment and rage. I didn't want to express my feelings or cause harm to others. I'm going to the park and I'm going to scream, was my thought. It felt quite good. Jacqueline was devastated to learn that her breast cancer was deadly because both her mother and grandmother had had the disease and had recovered. It resembled a horror movie. It seemed as if I were not in my own body. The oncologist was telling someone else instead of me. I sometimes wake up feeling overwhelmed and in need of comfort and I have to clutch my husband's hand in bed because I'm so afraid. Jacqueline boldly continued, though. I'm going to live my life to the fullest and take advantage of every opportunity I have. She even used her experiences with breast cancer to write and direct a play called Glass Cage, which she said helped her express feelings, emotions, and thoughts. Its name came from my feelings of being trapped and exposed with nowhere to run. It has to do with my initial breast cancer. At the nearby art center, it ran for two nights and was completely sold out. She has also written a short narrative about grief. It's unfortunate that I had to get to this point to realize how precious life is and that I didn't think about my health as much earlier, she continued. West Yorkshire resident Ruth Warden, 55, is also featured in the Breast Cancer Now video. She has lobular breast cancer, which doesn't often create a solid lump, making it more difficult to detect. In fact, Ruth was in good health, was busy, and didn't realize she had a problem until she was 50 years old and had a routine mammography. After a mastectomy, scans showed that the disease had progressed to her spine, liver, and bones due to primary breast cancer. Ruth recalled the day when she learned, saying, I had to get out of the hospital before collapsing. Rain was falling heavily. I cried all the way home and told my family, my husband, my two boys, and everyone else what had happened. It's really terrible. It seems as though your life has been stolen from you, and it occurs quickly. Ruth has received support from her husband and her two teenage sons during her treatment. However, because the disease has now gone to her brain, she is unable to drive. I live with it, but I don't want it to define me, she continued. I wish I had more energy to run and be more active, but I have to be careful with how I use it. Resting after a busy day is therefore necessary. Rather than fighting against what is happening, it's about learning to live with it. I'm not one for big hills, but Mam Tor and Glastonbury Tor are equally impressive. The head of fundraising, 
communications, and engagement at breast cancer. Now, Rachel Franklin stated, thousands of women in the UK are coping with secondary breast cancer, but their stories are often disregarded. The personal accounts of Katie, Jacqueline, Ruth, and other characters in this film provide a close-up view of what it's really like to have secondary breast cancer and highlight the importance of research in extending the lives of those affected by this terrible illness. In addition to financing research into various forms of breast cancer, the Foundation has allocated £5 million to studies on secondary breast cancer. However, it states that additional funding is required to achieve its goal of ensuring that, by 2050, every person with breast cancer survives and receives the assistance they need to do so.